Hello, everybody. Time for English class. Come on in. Hi, everybody. Alpha Pilot, are you coming in? Hello, Mentor. Mentor. Hello, hi. Hello. Is that Mentor? Hello? Yeah, hi, hello. Yeah, hi. where do you live? Mentor, I haven't met you before. Where do you live? Can you hear me? Mentor? Lekaj, hello Daniel Ortega, Aliban, Pablo. Hello, hi. Hello, hello. Hi. Yeah, is that mentor? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you? Hi. Yeah. Where do you live? I'm. I'm from Kosovo. Hello? Kosovo. Kosovo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kosovo. You know, yeah. What do you do? I'm a lecturer at the university. You're a lecturer. Yeah, You're a university. Uh, university professor. Yes, you know, kind yeah. of teaching assistant. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you teach? International law. International law. Yeah. Wow, it sounds very uh, uh, serious, complicated, difficult, important. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You know. Everything is complicated in this world. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything is important. Yeah. But depends fortunately, how you, yeah. Mm. Depends how you take it alive. If you yeah. if you take it easier or difficult. So that's Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything is easy and everything it can be difficult. Yeah. Okay. Who else is here? Aliban, hello? Do you have a microphone, Aliban? Aliban Nabila. No microphone? Say hello. Who else? Daniel, hello. We met before. Hello. How are you? I'm good. What is this picture that you have? Your picture, it says Spanish. Huh? What is that about? Uh, I I from Spain. Mhm. Mm I'm just looking at your uh, picture. From Palencia. Uh, and what do you do? I I'm an I'm an employee now. An employee. And I and I I'm trying to find a job. Every oh, day. Okay. Oh, okay. You're unemployed. Yes. Yeah. Unemployed. So lucky. Nothing to do all day. <laughs> <laughs> I I need to improve my English. Uh huh. And I I want to to <clears throat> to stay to stay here. To do to do any anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. While, while I I find a job. Mm. While you're looking for a job, you can practice English. Good idea. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Diego, hello. Hello. Where do you live? Uh, hello. I'm from Spain. Uh, I live in Burgos. It's in the in the north of Spain. Mm -hmm. um, we we met before, right? You met yes, me before. Uh, yeah, I we, remember. We met yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, uh huh. Uh huh. Cool, great. Hector. Hector is from Spain, Colombia, Peru. Where are you from? Hector, where do you live? 
have a microphone. Can't hear you. Are you talking? Oh, there we go. Now it's on. Uh, I am from Bilbao, from Spain. Bilbao, Spain. Yeah, the north of Spain. Mm, okay. What do you do? Uh, I'm uh, studying uh, English and uh, me mechanic, and I don't I don't have work because. Uh, there are many, many mass crises in in Spain. Yeah. Okay. But so you're using the time to learn English. Yes. Uh, because you... I'm going to Canada in in Jan. Oh, you're going to Canada. Yes. When? In June. In June. Yeah. Uh, to work or to travel uh, for learn English. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, five or six months and then go to Canada. Very exciting. Yeah. Do you know where in Canada exactly? Uh, to Toronto, but then I'm not, I don't know where I'm going to. Uh, mm -hmm. First Toronto. Yes, then I don't know. Okay. I lived... I lived for a long time near uh, Vancouver in the west, the other side. Very, very beautiful part of the world. Yeah. Very beautiful. But it rains a lot. Oh, uh, well, um, in Bilbao it's the same. Uh, oh, yeah? Almost always uh, it's raining. Ah, maybe similar. It's very uh -huh. sad. Okay. Pablo, hello. Pablo's hi, hi, hello. Hi, where do you live? Well, I live in a in a, in a small uh, country in Central America, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. So I'm working at a small hotel, and. Mm. I'm just trying to improve my English to get a better job, something like that. Mm -hmm. You work in a small hotel in Costa Rica. So, do you talk talk with customers there in English? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, so you I can try. practice practice English at your job. Yes. Lucky, great, cool. Who else is here? Let's see. Xavier. Xavier, is that how do I say your name correctly? Uh, yes, uh, I think it's quite correct. Xavier. Okay. I'm never sure. Where do you live? Uh, well, well, near Barcelona, Spain. Spain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and what do you do? Learn English and uh, well, uh, I did learn English when I was very young, and I need to practice now and to improve my English uh, because now I'm uh, retired. Mm -hmm. Okay, you learned it before. Now practice yes, to when, in get, my it, get it back. Uh huh. When I was a teenager and uh, my early twenties. Mm -hmm. Great. That was long ago. A hundred years ago. <laughs> Nearly. Uh, yeah. A hundred, not, but 40 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Rodrigo is here. Rodrigo Lutz. Have a microphone. Another. Yes, I'm here. Uh, where do you live? I live in the south of Brazil. The south of what? Uh, the south of Brazil. Brazil. Yes, Brazil. Porto Alegre, Porto Alegre, more exactly. Okay. What do you do? Uh, I study and uh, I am engineering. Yes, I'm here. You're an engineer. Right? You're an engineer? Yes. Uh, like and what, what, what kind of engineer? Uh, mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineer. Okay. Yeah. Brazil. Uh -huh. 
Great. So we have many, many boys and one girl. Just one yeah. girl. She's minority, yeah. Yeah, the girl is <laughs> in the minority. So <laughs> we, we won't do any games with boys against girls. And yeah. I f forgot your name. We met before. Your name is... I forgot. Can you tell us your name? Me? Yeah. Um, my name is Leika. Leika. Yes. Spell like um, L E I. Ah uh, no, R. R. L E I K A. R E I K A. Reka. Yeah. Reka. Reka. Uh huh. And where do you live? I live in Japan, Tokyo. Japan. Tokyo. Hi hi. Hi hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, anybody have a question for me? Ask me any where, question. Where are you from and what are you doing in your life? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from the USA. I'm American and right now I live in Vietnam. And uh, so I've been living in Vietnam and teaching English here since 2001. <laughs> What, what time is over there? Since 2001. Right now it's uh, 6, 6 p.m. Uh, 6 o'clock in the evening. And my, I'm from America. I'm American. My, my neighborhood's a little noisy. I have a dog, dog barking. It's very noisy here. Because I, I live in a really big, noisy, crowded city. Ho Chi Minh City, do you know? Yeah. It's a it's capital one? It's uh, it's the biggest city, but not the capital. The capital is Hanoi. Hanoi, yeah. How many uh -huh. people live there in Ho Chi Minh? In Ho Chi Minh City, um, about 8 million, I think. Oh. So many. Yeah, it's it's big, big and crowded and noisy. Lawrence, where in Vietnam? Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. So who else came in? Lou. Lou came in. Hello, Lou. Lou, are you there? Lou Q. So any other any other question? This is a speaking class, so we can just just talking is anything as long as we're talking, anything is okay. Any other question, comment, funny story? Not, not really. Okay. You can choose the topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have. Thai, hello. Thai, my no. uh, is it noisy. No. Hi, where do you live? Yeah, where do you live? I live in Vietnam. Vietnam, same as me. No. Yes. Ho Chi Minh City? No. Ho Chi Minh City. Near Ho Chi Minh City, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so you have some noise in the background, so if you're not talking, mute your mic. Okay? Yes. See, that's typical. Typical Vietnam sounds like that. <laughs> You can't you can't get away from the noise. Very difficult. Always noisy. Oh. Or maybe maybe it's somewhere else. Yeah, mute if you're not talking, please. Okay. Hold on just a minute. Okay, okay. I'm trying to mute him. Alright, so I have an article and it's it's about nine daily habits that will make you happier. And uh, I'm not going to give you the link. I'm going to read it to you or read parts. And so it's, it's a listening exercise for you. So did you hear the title? It's nine daily habits that will make you happier. Yes. Uh-huh. So what are they? Nine what? Daily habits. Yeah, daily habits. And yeah. what is a daily habit? What does it mean? The the practicing thing that you you you, you use usually. 
Yeah, a thing you do usually every day, daily habit. For example, for example, reading newspaper. Mm -hmm. Maybe every day you read a newspaper, so it's your yeah. daily habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lawrence asked the question in chat, why did you go there? And my answer was to be an English teacher. Came here in 2001 to be an English teacher. All right, so it's nine daily habits that will make you happier. So these are nine things that will make you happy. Yeah. Okay. And the first paragraph says, happiness is the only true measure of personal success. Happiness is the only true measure of personal success. Could you, can you follow that? Do you agree with you? this? Agree or disagree? Happiness are, are you, is... Hmm? Are you is, writing in the chat box? No, I'm not writing. You have to listen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because making I, it a know, listening, I bit, yeah, listening I was, challenge. Yeah, yeah. I was a little bit confused, you know. Yeah. Because maybe you... <laughs> So, can you repeat again, please? Yeah. It says, happiness is the only true measure of personal success. No, it doesn't mean that. What do you mean? You don't agree? No, I don't think so. It's a happiness okay. is the only true measure of personal success. So, you, you think there are other ways to measure yeah, sure. personal success? For like example, you can, you can be sucks. You, 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 you can be successed in a university example as a student but you m may not be happy because you missed another thing I think if you are not happy you are not success I think the goal uh, to reach in this life is be happy that's it yes yes but in the same times if you know if you pass the exam in the university you are happy but in the same times if your father died, it doesn't mean you are happy. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The only true measure of personal success. So, yeah, I can understand. There's other ways to be successful. If you pass your exam, then you are successful in your passing your exam. So, yes. yeah, but there, there are many things that you, you like, can can happen to you that make you sad, you know, at the same time. So mm -hmm. I don't think that is a it's a measure that that can can make your happiness. Because it, it is abstract notion, happiness. So everyone in the here can have own ideas, their own opinion, but I, I what I think that everyone of all group has own idea and all opinion in the, in this topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. But you can also understand the, the point of this this uh, article, right? Yeah, yeah, I get, get yeah, it. Yeah. So you can see uh, two two different ways to look at it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so then the, the next sentence, it says, uh, making other people happy is the highest expression of success. But it's almost impossible to make others happy if you're not happy yourself. <laughs> yeah, sure. You must uh -huh. be a good actor for that. <laughs> to act happy? Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it's yeah. almost Im impossible to make others happy if you're not happy yourself. So, saying, so yeah. making, making other people happy is yeah. the, they call yeah. it the highest expression of success. You know, but it, you have to be is, happy yourself. You know, yeah. You know, this is what Charlie Chaplin does before. He made happy, you know, actor Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. He made many people happy in the world during his shows, but he, he is inside who wasn't happy. He, he got many trouble inside him, as far as I know his history. Was he? I don't know. I don't Charlie know his story. Chaplin. Yeah. yeah. Was he unhappy? Yeah. He got many trouble things, you know, since he was child. Mm. Okay. So then it continues. Here are nine small changes that you can make to your daily routine that 
if you're like most people, will immediately increase the amount of happiness in your life. So these are nine things that you can do every day that will help you be happier. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Following? Nine things that will make you happier. And the first one is start each day with an expectation. Start each day with expectation. Yeah. Here we go. Expectation. Start each day with expectation. Sorry, Here. What, what expectation mean? What does expectation um, yeah. mean? Yeah, somebody, you, you can explain? Somebody else? Yes. I, I the think that the things that you can accept, you know, and you don't know what will happen, but you prepare, prepare your, yourself to accept even they are, even the worst things, worst, uh, bad things will happen to you. Am I correct? Yeah, expectation is the noun, expect is the verb, and yeah. it means uh, you think something will happen in the future. You expect it will happen. It, you think it will probably happen. Yeah. So they say start each day with expectation. And why not this sentence here, I'll, uh, I'll paste it in chat, and maybe somebody can read. Who feels like reading? Xavier, you feel like reading a sentence? A sentence? You, uh, you can read. You, you see it in chat? In the verbling chat? Uh, in chat, if, uh, here what it says, it, if there is any big truth yeah. about life, yeah. it's that it usually lives up to or down to your expectations. Uh, go further. Okay, yes. Uh, therefore, when you rise from bed, make your first thought something wonderful is going to happen today guess what we are probably right uh, good idea yeah is it a good idea i i think i think so uh, <clears throat> we must have a uh, uh, positive thought uh, in uh, in the morning when we wake, uh, and then surely the the day will be uh, better. Yeah, have a positive thought in the morning, and then yeah. the day will be better. Good yeah. advice. Uh -huh. Be uh, optimistic in the morning. Yeah. Do you guys all, you all agree? Good idea. Any new vocabulary or anything? Sorry, you can repeat. Somebody say something? No. Okay. So that was number one. Start each day with expectation. And here's number two. Take time to plan and prioritize. Take take time to plan and prioritize. Here I will. Uh, I'll paste it. Take time to plan and prioritize. To prioritize, what does it mean? To give priority of things, you know. To make it in the order, and some some things that you give priority uh -huh. to other things to do in your in your life. I think is realize what is more important than other things yeah yeah think about which which things are more important than other things mm -hmm. plan and prior prioritize and let's see here's a the sentence plan and prioritize this one uh, I'm not sure because some t some people you could also say don't plan and just yeah go yeah. through spontaneous also maybe make you happy sometimes but let's see what what do they say somebody can read who wants to read but you in the I verbling do. chat okay 
Okay. The most common source of the street is perception that you've got too much work to do, rather than obsess about it. Big one thing that if you get it done today, will move you close to your highest goal and propose in your life. Then do it that first. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Any uh, vocabulary? Comment, question, vocabulary? To obsess about something? To obsess about something. You know, what does it mean? Here, I'll write. Obsess about something. Can't stop thinking about it. Always thinking about it. Thinking, thinking. Can't stop. You're obsessing. So if you're thinking, yeah, Pablo, I'm, I'm not giving the source because I just want to bring the sentences out one by one. So Later I'll give the source. Uh, so uh, what does it say? The common source of stress. So you're, you feel stressed and you have too much work to do, but you're they're saying it's not a good idea just to think, oh no, I have too much work, oh no, I have too much work. So don't don't do that. Don't obsess about having too much work, but just prioritize. Decide which which one thing is the most important. Do that. Good idea? Agree? Don't agree? All right. The, the third one, that's number two, the third one is give a gift to everyone you meet. Fred, I've got some problem. I know. I don't know where are you typing now. Verbling chat. Verbling chat. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought here. Okay. So number three, give a gift to everyone you meet. What do you think they mean? It means that you, if you got some money and if you see some poor people, you can give some gift. And gift means also if you give a smile to someone who is sad. Mm hmm At the same time. Yeah. Uh, Reiki, do you want to read? Or somebody else? That was my idea. Me. Reiki could read. Yeah, okay. Mary? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about a formal wrapped up present. You give can be your smile, a word of thank, of encouragement, a gesture of politeness, even a friendly note, and never pa pass be beggars without having them something. Peace of mind is worth the spare change. Mm -hmm. There are some words that I, I couldn't understand. Wrap uh -huh. up. Wrapped up. Wrap up, yep. Um, wrap something is put, put something around it. If you have a gift, it's wrapped in colorful paper. You wrap, uh, okay. wrap a gift. Okay. Put it inside the paper. Yeah. A gesture, gesture yeah. of politeness. Or a friendly what, nod. Mm. What, is, what does it mean? Just oh, yeah, I know. I got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This the last part where it says never pass beggars without leaving them something. I yeah. personally I, I don't really agree with this, but you know, different people have different ideas. What what is the meaning of beggars? Uh, a person, a person, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the person who, you know, there are poor people coming to you if you if you are in the pub, you are drinking a coffee, they're coming to you and asking to give some money, you know? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, Thank you. to beg, 
To beg is the verb, ask for money, yeah. ask for something, begging, please give me. And then the beggar is the person. Lawrence, right. can you come into class? You have all these interesting comments in the chat. Come on in. Maybe it's full. Maybe it's full. So Lawrence says, concerning beggars, I obviously think that it's better to give to someone who doesn't need than not to give someone who needs. Maybe I'm not sure if I follow. <laughs> it's better to give to someone who doesn't need than, than not give to someone who, oh, okay. It's better to give to someone who doesn't need than not give someone who needs. Okay. Yeah, all right. I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, I guess it depends on where you are and everything, but uh, um, some, some beggars are run by a uh, mafia, you know, and if you give yeah, money yeah. to somebody and they, they can't keep the money, they have to give money to their boss, you know? To their boss, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so personally, I, I don't give money unless it's sometimes if somebody, if they have obviously have a really bad physical problem, you know, yeah. then maybe maybe I will, but... And especially to the child, bigger, I, I don't... Uh, yeah. hmm? Especially to the child, I, I don't think that it's a good idea to give them because... Even they need, they will be, you know, like a parasite in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that sentence, maybe I don't agree. Or maybe with a child or somebody, maybe I'll give them some food instead of yeah, some money. Right. Give them some food, yeah. and then they can eat the food. Yeah. But even that, I'm not sure. I'll tell you guys a a quick a quick story about a long long time ago. I was here in Vietnam, and uh, I was walking on the street, and I saw a tourist, a European tourist, gave uh, a, uh, they had bought some milk, they had bought uh, a box of milk, and they gave it to a beggar on the street, and the beggar was a child. So the tourist was on a motorcycle, and they, they had bought this milk, and they gave the milk to the child, and they felt really happy about, you know, helping this poor child. And, and the child took the milk and, and ran towards uh, a, an older person, and they were talking, da-da-da-da-da. But I didn't speak Vietnamese, so I, I couldn't understand what, what the child was saying. And so I asked the person I was with, I said, what did the child say? You know, they took the milk and blah, 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 blah. What did they say? And so the person I was with told me that they said, we can sell it. <laughs> That's what they oh. said. We can sell it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All, uh, they were really excited because they said, we can, sell, we can sell the milk. Yeah. yeah. So the, the tourist was really happy. They thought, oh, I'm doing a good thing. I'm giving them some food. They'll drink the milk. They're very poor. But then the poor person said, oh, we can sell it. You know, so and go sell we the can milk. sell it. Yeah. And can buy the cigarette. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll buy a cigarette or something. Yeah, or, or give it to the, somebody else or, or somebody. Yeah. We can sell it. Hi, Ali. Uh, yo, how does this site work? This is my first time. Yeah, if there's a place and you see the join class button, you can click and join. But if it's full, then just listening. So what were we on? That was number, what number was that? That was number three. Number three, these are nine daily habits to uh, make you happier. Here's number four. Some... Uh, Difficult vocabulary in this one. Deflect partisan conversations. This is an article for native speakers, not for English students. So this is native speaker language. Deflect partisan conversations. Deflect partisan conversations. Maybe if we read the description, we will understand. What does it mean, deflect? Yeah, it means make it go away, sort of. This one's a little more difficult to read. Like if, uh, uh, I don't know, difficult to explain. 
deflect. Easier if maybe if we just read, we will see. It's like a, like a mirror. Like a mirror. A mirror, the, the light comes and then the hits it and then it goes away. Yeah. So if you deflect something, it's coming to you, but then you it, you make it go away. So it doesn't doesn't hit you. Or to oh, avoid. Yeah. To avoid, no? Yeah, that's a a good easy way to say like avoid. Avoid it. Make it go away. Or to ignore to ignore something. Mm-hmm. We have a dictionary definition from Abdul to turn aside, especially from a straight course or fixed direction. So turn it aside. Uh, and partisan conversations, it's probably talking about really strong opinions. So it's maybe somebody can read. Uh, that's many people. Try? Sure. Arguments about politics and religion never have a right answer, but they definitely get people all riled up over things they can control. When such topics surface, bow out by saying something like, thinking about that stuff makes my head hurt. Uh -huh. Surface. When such topics surface, you can say surface. Surface, mm -hmm. surface. OK. Mm -hmm. Surface. So do you guys, uh, you can catch the meaning of this? Uh, yes, uh, I think that it says that uh, talking about uh, politics uh, may may lead you uh, or some dis some discussion discussions no uh, about different opinions about the about the the different cult cultures. Mm -hmm. and um, that is yeah yeah Lawrence did a good job of paraphrasing it's no use to take issue with somebody mm -hmm. that's what I was saying no use to uh, get all riled up to get all riled up get riled up is like get get upset or full of really strong opinion Get riled up. Get upset. It's no use to get all riled up over things you can't control. So can't control it anyway, so don't worry. All right. Uh, here's number five. Assume people have good at intentions. Assume people have good attentions. Intentions. People have good intentions. So maybe uh, paraphrasing is a great exercise. How would you paraphrase this? Paraphrase, do you know? Assume. What does it mean, assume? Assume. Anybody? You can explain, assume, to assume something. If, if you uh, assume something is true, then you, uh, you believe it already. Oh. So assume people have good intentions. You, you don't know if they have good intentions, so just, just believe that they do. Just assume it. Even though you don't know, just believe it. So maybe I would paraphrase this by saying, be, be optimistic about people. Does that make sense? Be optimistic about people. Optimistic, pessimistic, you know? Please, teacher, can you write assume? Assume. Yes. To assume something. Write the definition, you mean? To assume something. Uh, believe it's true even if you don't know. Teacher? Mm hmm. Can be yes. assume. Can be assume be right? 
What? Yeah. I can, can change you reach Asum. Yes, I can change Asum to be right, be right from some, some something, or not. Be right, like be, be right. Yes. Uh, maybe uh, to take something. To take something. Not exactly. No. Uh, believe. Anybody have a, a dictionary definition? Maybe the, the dictionary will do a better job than me. <laughs> believe it, even though that... you're not sure. Take up. Uh, it's a different, same word, different meaning. Is there another meaning? It's almost incredibility. What do you mean, Lawrence? Simply believing, yeah. Okay, have a good lunch, Lawrence. See ya. Thank you. Assume, uh, believe it, even though you don't know. So here's the the paragraph. Who wants to read? Rosie, Rodrigo? May I try? Yes. Okay. Since you can't read minds, you don't really know the why behind the what the people do. In putting every motto to the other people's will be happier at extra measure too late. Well, assuming good intention leads you open to reconciliation. Mm -hmm. There's a, another way to paraphrase, don't be cynical about people. So believe believe that people are good. Just believe they are good. Maybe later you'll find out they're not good, but at the beginning when you don't know, believe that people are good. People have good intentions. Oh, here's here's one about food. The next one is about food. This is number six. Eat high quality food slowly. Eat <laughs> high quality food slowly. Will help you be happy. Don't eat too fast. And good quality. Here, here's the sentence. Who can read? Lou? Uh, can it be me? Okay. Okay. Uh, sometimes we can't avoid scarfing something quick to keep us up and running. Even so, at least once a day, try to eat something really delicious, like a small chunk and a fine cheese or an imported chocolate. Focus on it. Test it. Savor it. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting advice. Linger in eating food to taste. Yeah. Abdul or man. Abdul says a, a good word. Linger. To linger. Take your time. Go slowly. Linger with the taste of the food. Uh -huh. Especially uh, something special. And uh, yeah, to scarf food down. Uh, I mean to eat it, uh, eat really fast. Scarf down your food. It's kind of a slang idiom word. Scarf down some food. And to savor something. This is a good word. To savor something. Really enjoy the flavor, enjoy the taste, savor it. Mm -hmm. Really enjoy it. Hello, Edward. Some new people coming in. Edward, just Edward. Okay, we're talking about nine daily habits that can help make you happy. What was that? Was number six? Three more. Three more. Here's number seven. Let go of your results. 
let go of your results. So don't worry too much. Let's see what do they say. Aliban can read. Who didn't read yet? Reiki? Okay. The big enemy of happiness is worry, which comes from focusing on events that are outside our control. Once we, you've taken action, there's usually nothing more you can do. Focus on the job at hand rather than something weird, fantasy, or m what might happen. Mm -hmm. Some weird fantasy of what might happen. So saying don't focus on events that you can't control. Just do your best and then let go. That's all you can do is do your best. Any vocabulary in here? Uh, to be uh, at hand, to be at hand, it means uh, near, near or right now. Okay, Edward wants to read the next one. Great. The next one is turn off background TV. This one may be uh, not so common now because everybody loves the internet now. Turn off <laughs> background TV. To be in the background, you know? Because some people wake up in the morning and turn on a television and then it's just there all day in the background but not really watching, not really paying attention to it but it's just in the background so yeah I I hate I hate that I really don't like it if there's a TV in the same room but nobody's watching it oh, it makes me crazy <laughs> I don't like it at all so Edward Edward is he still here yes Edward you're still here you can read all right uh... hi Many households leave their TVs as background now noise while they are doing other things. The entire point of broadcast TV is to make you dissatisfied with your life so that you'll buy more stuff. Why subliminally program yourself to be a mindless consumer? Huh. Do you guys agree? Totally. <laughs> Me too. Totally agree. TV exists to sell you things. So there's one more. Last one. End each day with gratitude. End each day with gratitude. And then I'll give you the link also. What does gratitude mean? To be thankful. Yeah, exactly. Thankful. Give thanks. Give thanks. Be thankful. Mm -hmm. So, last one. Somebody can read? Reiki, you didn't read yet? Okay. Just before you go to bed, write down at least one wonderful thing that happened. It might be something as small as uh, making a child, child laugh or something as huge as a million dollar deal. Whatever it is, be grateful for that day because it will never come again. <laughs> yeah, it'll never come again. Here's a link to the article, by the way. It's from Yahoo. 
Edward has a this is a quote from Fight Club, the movie Fight Club, huh? Advertises advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy stuff we don't need. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I changed the bad word. That's okay. I don't know that word. I never heard it before. So we have some minutes left. Anybody have comment, question, funny story about this or anything? Edward, where do you live? I live in Caracas, Venezuela. Venezuela. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Is the the picture, the ocean in the picture, is that Venezuela? Uh, actually, it's a picture from Aruba. Aruba. It's, uh, yeah, it's really close to Venezuela, but it's not ours. It's from uh, Netherlands, I think. Uh, beautiful water. Amazing color, the color of the water. So, five minutes, anybody, anything, comment, question, funny story, joke about happiness or anything else? Do you agree with all of this, some of it? The only thing that bothered me was give money to every beggar you see. I don't, don't agree with that, but everything else seems like good advice I'm sorry uh, I wasn't here when you say that why you are not angry why you don't agree with that uh, because um, because often uh, the people begging on the street they they can't keep the money themselves they often have to pay pay it to somebody and organizing them you know so you never know you give money but you never know who they are, where that money is going, how it affects them. So I just, I don't believe in doing that. But if they ask you for food, would you go to the supermarket and buy something for them? So you, you missed my story earlier. <laughs> I told a story about this, <laughs> and uh, but you, you weren't here. Somebody can, uh, you can I give think, a, uh, uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, I think uh, that there is, a, I don't know if I can say, a contradiction uh, with uh, the phrase that you must assume that people uh, have good intentions. So uh, you don't think that of the beggars. Right. Yeah. Or uh, maybe I don't... I don't assume well, it's not really their atten intentions. It's more like how how is it organized? How does it affect them? Maybe their intentions are really good, but I'm not sure that my money is really going to help that person. You know. It might help their boss. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like in the movie Slumdog Millionaire, they they show this situation very well. You know this movie? Great movie. One of my favorite movies. Do you guys know? This movie is about part of it is about some beggars in India and how they're organized by a mafia. Anything else? Comment? Question? Joke? Song? Now, Aliban will sing a song. <laughs> Well, I think that the all the, these topics are are too much uh, 
philosophics or or spirituals, but it it's an alive too much the the good action, good action, good action, and well. Mm -hmm. well, so what did you say? The, these are philosophical ideas and what? Uh, can you repeat the, your question, please? Yeah, I'm just trying to understand what, what you said. You said uh, these are philosophical ideas and what else? Um, I, I think that it... it uh, Underlie, underlie too much the the good sessions or or the good ideas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ashraf, you can join if there's space. Sure. Aliban is here. What else? So who who has seen Slumdog Millionaire? Nobody. Nobody, huh? Okay, Jose. Hello. Jose, have a microphone. Edward says it's a cool movie. Yeah, I like it. Jose, do you have a microphone? No. Okay. Well, it's time to go. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. It's Thank been you. Interesting for me. Hopefully, helpful for you. Very helpful. Thank Great. you. Great. Very helpful. Edwards, first class. Great. Welcome to Vergling. All right. So have a great uh, day or evening or wherever you are, and I hope to see you again. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye See bye. you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.